We are here in Smiths Grove, Kentucky. This has been an antique destination for as long as I've been in the antique business. I haven't been back here in a long time, so we're going to take a look around and see what this neat little antique destination between Bowling Green and Mammoth Cave has to offer. The biggest chunk of antiques is in this block here. This is one of the big old main blocks of downtown all built around 1915. Most of this is now Main Street Antiques and Collectibles. This end unit was an antique store for a long time. It has been closed for a long time and now the people are clearing it out. So we're going to start there because they're having a closeout sale. It looked like a bunch of junk heaps in there when I looked in the windows in the past, but we'll see. Appreciate it. Well, these guys got a truckload. So we're going to come in and see what else there is. I see some nice old furniture back there, this uh, bat sideboard there with the big mirrors and all of that. Yeah, it comes in two pieces. The other, the other hutch there to the right of it also comes in two pieces. Oh yeah, that looks more European. That's neat. Yeah, it's... Uh, so I haven't seen this place open in a long, long time. This building got hit with the tornado in May. Oh. So oh no. I forgot you had a tornado here too. Yep. Two years ago, it took a uh, 5,000 square foot barn full of my inventory uh, to the foundation. Oh, how awful. Yeah, I was in Dawson Springs and um, we were on the side of town that didn't get crunched, but a bunch of our people did. This place really is mounded high. He lost his barn in the tornado. He brought whatever he could here. He just wants to get rid of it. He just sold a truckload to those folks. I got the feeling it didn't cost them very much. So if we see anything in here, that's a deal. But we gotta find it first. A couple of McCoy washstand pitchers and bowls with the turkey from the early 70s. But boy, it is just a whole lot of a whole lot in here. But I don't see a whole lot of vintage things that are up my alley. Neat reverse painting from about 1920 with the castles. And he said there is more up here, but to watch our steps. So, oh boy, let's see what's up these stairs. This is one freaky old building. And he is not kidding, it is just piled. So much stuff. The Yale Shakespeare, an entire compendium of that. These file drawers, somebody would like those. Those were for slides originally. I think Santa stopped here already. Whoo, boy. Yeah, it's just, it's just a lot of moving. A lot of moving and cleaning. It is a lot of moving and cleaning, that's for sure. But I don't think I'm going to be the one to do it, based on what I see here. Psycho Granny's Quilt Shop and more. Well, it looks like a whole lot more because not too many quilting grannies I know have paintings of the band Kiss in their window. But we're going to go beyond there and into the foxhole. Looks like a combination of vintage and new stuff. And we're going to take a look and see if they've got anything old. I love the old Art Deco facade. Only $20 on the candle blow hole. That's pretty neat. I like those chairs. Those are cool. The sling back leather design definitely looks Italian. It's somewhat reminiscent of Scarpa chairs. Those have a good look. There's some neat wicker. This looks like stuff that would sell in Florida, especially now that Golden Girl style is coming back in. Nice aluminum tree. This place is nicely put together. Definitely has a feel to it. It is a mix of new and old, as you can see. There is a chainsaw art owl. That's pretty neat. I had one of these that I actually used as a scratching post for my cats. I think I paid 50 for it back in the day. 120 today. There is the Golden Girls 80s style. Some people are starting to gravitate towards that. They do have some vintage clothing. Got picker. I don't know. They mean an antique picker, of yeah, course. But why, who would say that? Got picker. I don't think anybody would. I think that's why it's still here. <laughs> Illinois Central, that's an old railroad related one made in the USA. Shortly before the Illinois Central went away. Wonder what they want for that. These caps with the foamy front pad and the label that says they're American made are definitely collectible now. 
depending on the condition and what they represent. Ah, the checkered vans. Thanks to a lovely viewer of mine, I have a brand new pair. But these two look about my size. Well, there is a fab 1970s sofa with an afghan on it already. So the whole period all in one piece. Somebody had a collection of these, including some old school teams like the New York Titans. This one never got a pin back. Czechoslovakia, which is no more. Memphis State, Real Madrid. Seems like a very strange mix of buttons. These probably were for a company that went out of business. Hey, there's the Los Angeles Chargers, which they now are again. And don't be one of these. The little rattan table that swirls into the middle is cute. Another 1970s piece. More vintage fashion, more hats. 45 records. Interesting combination of stuff here. I have to say this is a store that seems a lot more urban than the area that we're in, but it's fun. Ah, here is the sash for the Scouts with all of your badges on it. Seamanship, I remember that one. Here's a nice printer's cabinet with the metal drawers that pull out. These are big empty flat doors, so it'd be good for posters and paper and that sort of an ephemera collection. The IBM Selectric in green. I learned how to type on one of these in blue back around 1982. I wish I knew the story of these banners. I've had one before. It sold right away to a friend of mine in Seattle. And here's some cool, truly vintage Christmas. This guy definitely has just the kind of nice age and wear that you like if you are looking for one of these that really looks old. Definitely a well put together store. There is one of those throne chairs that Zeno really likes. Yes. If it was orange, I'm sure we'd be bundling it into the car. Then just on the other side of the railroad tracks, we have this very brightly painted fun store called Marigold Vintage. Nice sets of mid-century glasses in the caddies. Oh yes. One of those English candy tins, or is that American? Smith crafted Chicago. Ah, Chicago. So a little earlier then. Cookies. Mr. It told you right on it. Mr. Mouth. Oh, yes. That was a pretty popular game with little kids, as I recall. Oh, and the Family Feud. Let's see which version is this. You can't really see his face, but I think that's supposed to be the old Richard Dawson version. He isn't kissing everybody, but it does look like 1977 string art. That's fun. Somebody spent a lot of time on that. I like the geometric of it. Look at this beautiful cutout screen that has sold. Again, this looks like something that would have been made in Asia, but it is really nicely detailed. It reminds me somewhat of the Shisham screens, but this one is pretty elaborate with the two-toning. Let's see if they tell us anything about it. Ah, oh, it's got the original tag. Solid wood made in India, of course, and it looks like it went for about $195. If you have one of those old console stereos and the guts are gone, you can turn it into a bar or shelving or any sort of thing you can imagine, and that's what they've done here. There are a lot of these cases running around looking for something to be done with them, so if you're good at repurposing, you can turn this into something really cool. Next to it, we've got a bunch of these cigarette cards for tennis players. These are English tennis players, Will Cigarettes. Only 16 for the entire thing framed. I have a friend who uh, runs the Antique Mall in St. Pete who used to be a professional tennis player, so maybe that's something for her. These were all done around 1931. I loved the auto garage when I was a kid. It's not for sale. I'm sure it's someone's toy that they're keeping from childhood, but at least we get to look at it. We are right before Christmas, but somehow there's still some elves on shelves and bottle brush trees priced about $5 each. Here's a really cool enamel stove. And I forget that even though we're in an area that feels very rural and is near Mammoth Cave, we're also not that far from Bowling Green. And Bowling Green's a big college town, and that's why we are seeing a lot of vintage fashion in these stores here. It makes sense now that I think about it. They do have a customer that can get here from not too far away 
who would be into this kind of stuff. There's a house coat. Love this suitcase. Figurettos, bras, and girdles. And they even have some of the old shopping bags. This has got to be from about late 60s, early 70s. Looking at the colors and the style. If you're enjoying this video, please do thumbs up and like it. It really helps the YouTube folks know that people are interested in this so we can continue to grow this great antique and vintage community. And by the way, if you're tired of advertising and you don't have YouTube Premium, you can see this content ad-free by making a monthly contribution to our memberships on Patreon. So go to the Antique Nomad on Patreon.com and check that out. You will get early access and no advertising. Old 8-tracks and a player and a receiver from the 70s for $12. That seems pretty good. These little gnomes look like they're probably something from Miller's Studio. Gnomes with mushrooms. 1979. Definitely 1979 colors with that beige. I wonder if these are for sale. I've been finding a lot of not for sale stuff so far. Chipped up. Yeah, a little bit chipped. Only $45 on this entire set of the Jeanette Hellenic glassware with the pitcher. If you like Jasperware by Wedgwood, it definitely has that look to it right out of about 1970. Smurfette mittens. Wow. $10. That would probably be a bargain for somebody who is into the Smurfs. And there's a lot of people who grew up with that who are in their 40s now. So pretty collectible area. These are the 12 days of Christmas. But they've mixed a couple of different sets because the third and the sixth day are tall cylinders and the other ones taper. So that's why they have them priced individually at $3 each, which is actually pretty cheap if you're assembling that set. Vitamix? Yeah. Oh yeah. Avocado, $15 is a great price when you yeah. consider how expensive those were new. And even on the resale market, they usually sell for 50 and up. So that does seem like a pretty good deal if it all runs right. Well. Stainless steel. I mean, these are the old ones. These are ALF Arte from Spain, and it's an entire set. They're really nicely painted. It's all hand done. They do have a mark on the bottom. Let's take a look at one of the dishes because that'll be easier to get to. It doesn't look like this set was used very much. Probably something somebody bought because it looked good in the cabinet, but you certainly could use every day. And it's priced at $2.50 for all of that, including the urn. The 90s have been a while now. For a brief period of time, I remember when women were carrying bowling bags as purses, and this would have been a great one. This one has the ball in it, and it's $22. My grandchildren, apparently an interspecies marriage. <laughs> Startled you, didn't it? <laughs> well, I, I didn't know that there... I didn't know. How it was on happened. already, yes. Zeno has had a few of these. That's why I'm having him test it because he knows what to look for. They're noisy, but they do a great job. He's going to teach us something here. You got to check these for leaks. So he's going to put it on and we're going to see what happens with fluid. Now it's not so noisy because it's doing its job. And that is going to be some well-stirred water. Seal seem good? Yeah, it's not leaking. That is definitely important. I bought an old blender that was great, but I had to put new seals on it. $600 on the life-size blow mold Santa. A lot less on the smaller one. And then, yes, they have the TVs. Lots of TVs. If you still get analog somewhere. Across the street from the foxhole are these little buildings. The one on the right is Sly, a coffee and gift shop that the folks with the foxhole also run. And then in the middle, the cool old Farmer's Bank, which is a great old design for a little building, says that it is the Kentucky Card Vault. And yes, they are serious about being a card vault. They have got a ton of cool stuff. And a lot of it looks like it is slabbed and carded and graded. There's Kobe Bryant from the Flare Showcase, 120 on that. There's the Mosaic autographs. So they've got some of the really cool, uh, more recent stuff. And they've got all sorts of price points starting at $10 and up. They can also get your sports cards and Pokemon cards graded for you. 
And so that's a nice service. If, if you are a card collector, this is a good place to know about. If you like the golden era, well, here are some of your golden era cards. Stan Musial, Hank Aaron, when he was with the Milwaukee Braves. Thurman Munson is a rookie for the Yankees. It's been a while on some of these. Mickey Mantle, of course, everybody gets very excited about Mickey Mantle. 200 on that card. And then they've got your uniforms and they've got signed balls and all of this stuff. A lot of it with certificates of authenticity. So if this is your jam, this would be a really fun place where you could look through things for hours. When we focus on our antique and vintage malls, this stuff can be not so male friendly. And so it's nice to have a place where sports fans of all genders can come and have a good time. Well, the folks who like the frilly fancy housewares can chop down the street for that. All right, so when you walk this way, you have a nice covering over the sidewalk, thanks to Main Street Antiques and Collectibles. Wow, look at that old safe. Right in the drawer, we see that this place definitely has really beautiful things. This is Italian, it's 20th century, but it's really nicely done. It's drop down desk with a little bit of curvature similar to a Bombay style. And this is priced at 1200. It's a great store because they really do vet what their dealers bring in. And so you're seeing antique and vintage and you're seeing pretty much any category you would imagine in a neat old antique store. Everything from children's playing cards to a whole shelf full of salt dips. This is probably the most serious true antique shop left in town and always has been the mainstay of the town. This is a very, very pretty cabinet with that stained glass in the center there. And the bullet in the middle tells us that this is likely to be a European piece and that is priced at $11.95. If you need the lid for a moon and stars lamp, they have a whole bunch of various colors and sizes there for you. More moon and stars, including a few pieces we don't see too often. The shakers with the lids here are neat. The e parent is not so commonly seen, priced at 75 And then the syrup with the drip cut top is priced at 60 I don't see the syrup much at all. Once the automobile replaced the buggy, a lot of buggies were scrapped. A few people thought to save the seats for them and use them as little benches for children or to use in other conveyances. And those that are left are collectible now for the same reason. This one's priced at $325. I've heard of the movie Bull Durham. Well, Bull Durham Tobacco was one of the first to sponsor baseball and produce these guides as an advertising premium. And that is the connection. And there's a price of $175 on this very early one from 1910. Cost five cents new. And then everyone threw them away. And now they cost this price. This cupboard is a very classic English design we see from the 1920s. Very heavy and stalwart, lots of press carving, lots of repeating arches, a lot of mix of different designs, popular around the 1920s. In this country, it kind of went with Moorish Revival or Old Spanish Trail. This one's priced at $375. Next to it, you have a cabinet with some nice old glass. You see the rippling in it, and you see the carved faces in it. And it's got the carving even down on the doors with the people having the party. Looks like a German piece priced at $4.25. These prices are really very fair and very reasonable and haven't really changed much in a long time. If you're looking for true antique furniture, again, this is a good time to buy it. It seems like younger people are starting to catch on to it because it's less expensive and more available now than modernism. $25 for the fan with Lindbergh, Spirit of St. Louis. This is from right after he flew across the Atlantic by himself in 1927. He became such a star so quickly and then, well, had a lot of problems in life after that. Wardrobe on chest, an interesting combination. And a very nice tall sideboard next to the mirrored piece from the 1880s. I always liked Dorothy Bower's designs for Hall. This is Butterfly. This is the really crazy vase from the mid 50s only 30 dollars now the prices on these have really come down i think hull is really undervalued and it is seeming like it's starting to pick up a lot of the floral lines were done in pink colors and that's coming back into decorating now i actually had a viewer at a recent sale tell me bring anything pink that you've got 
and that made me feel like it is really starting to happen. And there's a beautiful cabinet, this French vitrine with the metal trim work, the marquetry with the flower basket, very pretty, interesting shape to the glass here. You would not want to break that. That would be very expensive to fix. This is from about 1890 and priced at $24.95. 870s Coca-Cola bottle radio. The original box makes a big difference on those. I don't see a price, but I imagine it's somewhere in the 35 range. This piece back here is interesting, partly because of the Star of David carving on the left cabinet there. This would have served several purposes. It has a low serving or bench area for seating. It has a cupboard. It's got a big mirror. This could have been useful in a hall. Unusual form. And it is priced at $12.95 in Walnut. Even though there's a lot of real antiques here, there are some fun vintage collectibles here as well. The Rocket Bank at $90 with that Buck Rogers style rocket before they changed to the Apollo style in the 60s. Cap guns, of course, very popular in the 50s. These are some neat advertising pieces. These are tin litho from about 19 teens, 20s, and they would have been to hold matches. And then you also have pot scrapers that were done in the same manner. Prices on these seem to be between 75 and 150, and that is in fact what they typically sell for if they have the lithograph and are in good condition. Now the plain ones that you just used at home, they have some of those as well priced as low as 29. They say they're 20% off these prices that I've been telling you. And there is some cool stuff here. The pheasant here, it says it's signed Fred Everett. It's that mark there. And the heron is really cool too. This is a pretty good collection. They've got some great cake molds for the seasons. So you've got the rabbit for Easter. You have Hello kitties, there's Santa Claus. That's a really good one, $4.95. The lamb we see more often, but it's very cute, $110. Great bookends. I really like metalwork and cast iron because I think there's a lot of real detail that went into it at a certain point, especially around, you see the patent date on this of 1868 for that match safe. Things became more and more elaborate and decorative as the Victorian period went on. So even the most basic functional items started to be fancy. And then this one says Frisco line ring up Frisco line. So this is going to be right about the time that telephones are starting to be a thing and you can actually call the railroad and arrange what you need. And they had to remind you because the phone was a new idea still. Great still banks too. Look at that one. Kiwani boiler. The AC Williams banks out of the 1920s. This one's arcade, the big stag there. And then this one's advertising renown underfeed stoves. Monkey Doorstop. This is one of the best selections of Bradley and Hubbard and Hubley and some of these other places in one place that I've seen in a long time. I especially like the Bradley and Hubbard Art Deco bookends. This is getting very close to the end of their production. You see the B and H mark on the bottom there in the center. The skyscraper design, that's just fantastic. It'd be with the discount uh, 155 And again, these are pretty hard to find. This is a cute little coffee mill for home use, but decorated. Landers, Frary, and Clark from New Britain, Connecticut. They did a lot of this sort of metalwork at the time. Two larger coffee mills. This one has the stand that it came with originally, which is amazing. With the catch cup, this is an Elgin National, priced at $19.95, and the one next to it with an 1898 patent date. Really wonderfully decorated. And that is an Enterprise number two priced at $19.95. These oftentimes are missing the finials or knobs, so this one's a really complete piece. Bradley and Hubbard made a lot of really amazing things. This is a group of militia at a pub, and it is painted on brass, and then there's an easel behind or it could hang. This is from about 1900. At their peak, they were the leading brass decorative object maker in the country. And I like to show that because a lot of people are into brass now and are looking at 1970s brass. And that's some of that's very nice and fun too. But there's some really amazing old pieces like this with the dolphins in it that are just not like anything that was made in the later part of the 20th century. 
wonderful Mandalian mesh purse on the right there and then the blue purse on the left with the micro beading is very nice as well. I have to say for dollars for donuts, the Mandalian at 20% off is, is a pretty good deal. It would be the one I would take if I were collecting. As a reseller, it's a little out of my range, but getting close. And then these are mill weights. They are not weather vanes. They are not door stops. They are bigger than that. It was actually the weight for a windmill. And these are really cool and hard to find. A lot of them were scrapped during the wars and they're just gone. So you've got the buffalo, which is very hard to find at 1600, the horse at 795. This one here is really cool. Another Bradley and Hubbard. This is the larger parrot doorstop with the colored painting and that's priced at 595. Pretty hard piece to find. And I'm amazed that they have so many of these grinders in stock. And upstairs and the basement's now open. So which one should we go to first? Well, let's go up the stairs just because they're fun, they're narrow, and they look like they're really creaky. And I love that. You know, you get in an old place, look at the wainscot ceiling. I mean, this building is over 100 years old and it's got this just great feel. It's like almost being shipboard <laughs> where you hear the creaking and groaning of the stairs and the decks. This is a really neat piece here. A child size horn chair. 1950s and they have this priced at 175 which for horn furniture i realize it's small and not everybody has a place for juvenile furniture like this adorable little rocker here that actually looks like a lloyd's loom style with the color from the 1920s they don't specify that but it's priced at 71 dollars here's a little cart that you would pull maybe yourself with your kid in it you might even hook that up to a small animal like a goat and have them pull you around if you could find a goat that was willing. This space is 40% off and they've got some pretty cool stuff and the prices with the discount are pretty good. W.C. Fields unfortunately lost his stogie. These were popular in the early 70s. 1971 is the date on that one. A couple of different companies made them. For active attention to your advertising copy, put it in this space. Well, I guess that would work. Lots of fun cookie jars. Petit Gâteau. This is an American bisque from about 1960. The Chef Cookie Jar, also American bisque. Here is the American bisque Owl Cookie Jar. Cute little dog there. And then over here is the Goble Owl Cookie Jar with those great eyes. And with the discount today, boy, that's really quite reasonable. That's only about $27. And around the corner, here's one more upstairs room. You can tell they did some reinforcements so that we could come up here and have this mezzanine. I really like the clover shapes on these little end tables from about 1900. Nice little lamp table with an undershelf. This one's priced at about 110, which is not a bad deal. $600 on the fancy accordion, but the fancy accordions, especially if it's a good model, which this one is, the Camerano, is considered one of the better ones, and 600 is about the going rate on those. Acro Agate, the company that made a whole lot of the slag glass marbles in the 30s, also made little slag glass favor vases in the shapes of little urns, cornucopias, and then slightly larger flared vases here. These are all priced in the 20 to 30 range. A pretty quilt to the right, and then a really fun chenille blanket from the 50s with the cowboy on the bucking bronco and the lariat design and the boots around. That is pretty fun. Lots of catacombs in these places, so we're going to go to the very far back. We will see a big Fenton rose lamp in the mode. This is right out of the 1980s, priced at $4.50. The famous McCoy strawberry cookie jar, priced at $65, and then next to it is the Keebler. Francoma actually made the Keebler tree cookie jar for a while. It does not look like their other work. I believe McCoy later got the contract. Francoma and McCoy cooperated together on several things. When Francoma was too busy to do the Oral Roberts Easter plates, McCoy took over. So the ones with the white base are McCoy made, and the ones with the sepulpa red clay are from Francoma. And then these, well, these are reproductions. Reproduction Roseville in the peony they do not say usa because we finally stopped allowing them to put usa on things made in china and for you hawaiiana folks well the mccoy pineapple cookie jar is a great piece at 50 dollars 
This one's a homemade owl, but he's pretty cool. $25. He's a little cross-eyed. Back down the stairs we go. They also have a bunch of cards. Since the card vault is right around the corner, I suppose people come to town looking for these, so not a bad idea to have some here as well. Because when people come to an antique town, they look through everything in the town. The Texaco, North Dakota, these oil vessel toys were popular in the 1960s. You don't see a ton of them because they weren't really super cheap to begin with, but there it is. The Texaco, North Dakota. And it says this one actually still works. It's priced at 110 There's our information on it. The U.S. Texaco, the SS Texaco, North Dakota. And they have all the information about the ship on there. Texaco really liked giving out premiums to kids in the 1950s and 60s. This booth says it's having a reopening sale, so they have come back into the mall, which is pretty cool. Stangle Cornucopia vase here, priced at 46 minus 15%. They are having a sale here, and they're having a special sale on Watt Pottery. I think Watt Pottery is really, really neat. They were in business for about 30 years, and so they made quite a bit, and a lot went into collections. There's a big collector's society and I think some of these collections are coming back onto the market, and that's why we're seeing the prices go a little bit softer. The Apple Baker, which is a classic with the lid at the discounted price, would be 59 Quite a collection of Gone with the Wind parlor lamps. I particularly like the red one here. Most of these seem to be 1950s, 60s era. And if you really had a fancy dressing area, in the 1890s or around 1900 you might have a piece like this where it has these display cabinets in the side it's got the bat wing mirrors that come off on the sides that fold in and out so you can move this around you and see yourself in fabulous 180 degrees <laughs> and then you can tell that you should have shaved today cute little vanity brush People didn't always just make these into pin cushions. Sometimes they became brushes. This one has an unfortunate glaze flaw in a place that makes it look like a wardrobe malfunction. Japanese from the 1920s. I like the old sign here, Philco Auto Radio Service Station. This is back in the 50s when maybe your radio had to be installed separately. They didn't all come fresh from the factory with radios back then. So you might have to go to someone independent to serve it. It's done on Masonite. They have $4.95 on that. The basement was not open the last time I was here, which has been a while. So it looks like they have renovated and opened it up. And we're going to see what's in here. Old rolls for your player piano. They only sell for about $5 each these days because there are not that many people with player pianos. But they're really fun and... I have a friend who bought a fairly modern one, so they do still make them. This is an old shoeshine chair, probably from a train depot or a bus station where you sat up high and you paid for your shoe shine. There's where you rested your feet. Back when people shined their shoes, now everybody seems to wear casual stuff. This is priced at $375. Also priced at $375 is this very handsome circa 1900 American oak sideboard with the drawers and the cabinets and the applied carving. Very pretty piece, great price. Again, it's not just antiques in this store. This is a great day bed, very 1960s. It's only priced at 300 In another market, this would certainly sell for a lot more. I keep having these dreams where the bull really does run through by China shop and destroys it all. What does it mean? Well, it had been a really long time since I'd gotten to Smith's Grove, and it's great to see that the businesses are still happening here and that it's still a town full of antiques and vintage. If you ever get to Mammoth Cave, Kentucky, which is an amazing natural wonder, I would say that it's worth the extra little drive to Smith's Grove, and you'll have a lot of fun here above ground. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.